Hello, and thanks for stopping by. It's incredible to think, isn't it, that in years gone by, all of the traffic you can see roaring here along Euston Road would have been horse-drawn. The clatter of hooves must have been deafening. One of the most evocative accounts of London, in the days when traffic was horse-drawn, can be found in Anna Sewell's classic 1877 novel, Black Beauty, in which Beauty spends a period of his tough working life as a London cab horse. I could be guided by the slightest touch of the rain, and that is a great thing in London, among carriages, omnibuses, carts, vans, trucks, cabs, and great wagons creeping along at a walking pace, some going one way, some another, some going slowly, others wanting to pass them. Omnibuses stopping short every few minutes to take up a passenger, obliging the horse that is coming behind to pull up too, or to pass and get before them. The thousands of horses who served London were supported by a major infrastructure, glimpses of which can still be seen here and there today. The most obvious examples being London's many news, which were once lined with stables but now mainly contain plush homes. A number of old 19th century troughs, which are for both horses and cattle, can still be seen too, such as this one on Bayswater Road. Over on the colonnade meanwhile, close to Russell Square, you'll find the old horse hospital, which has since been turned into an arts venue. Rather appropriately, the cosy pub opposite to the former vets is called the Friend at Hand. Personally, my favourite piece of old horse-related architecture is located on South Wharf Road, next to Paddington Station. Once known as the Mint Stables, these buildings now form the Mint Wing, which is part of St Mary's Hospital and if you venture into the courtyard, you'll see these distinctive ramps, which I'll get to in a bit. The stables were named after a pub called the Royal Mint, which also stood on South Wharf Road but is now sadly long lost, and they were built by the GWR, the Great Western Railway, that grand company who entrusted the construction of their line between London and Bristol to the genius engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Despite being masters of the Iron Road, the GWR still relied heavily upon horses, primarily to transfer freight to and from their huge Paddington goods depot, which was once located on the spot now occupied by Sheldon Square. In other words, the horses were the lorries of their day. In addition to moving goods, some horses also worked within the depot itself, shifting wagons around alongside the little steam shunters. The number of horses owned by the GWR was immense, the peak being in 1909, when they had 3,000 working at various points along their network. Even as late as 1936, 500 horses were based at Paddington alone, just for carrying out deliveries around London. The Mint Stables appear to have come into being at around the same time Paddington itself was growing. The earliest reference I found to them dates from December 1840, when an unfortunate fellow working there was declared bankrupt. By 1849, the stables were home to 40 horses, as shown in this advert offering a contract for their manure. Any takers? As Paddington Station developed, so too did the stables. They were first modernised in 1876, but the really interesting bit comes in 1884, when they had a second story added, followed by a third in 1897, essentially making them the horsey equivalent of high-rise flats. In all, these multi-story stables could accommodate 600 horses. The animals couldn't use lifts or stairs, of course. Instead, they'd trot up and down these long sloping ramps, which can still be seen within the mint wing today. Although this one has since been converted into stairs, it is possible to walk up this one, and for a human, I must say, it's pretty steep going. Along with the high-rise stables, the mint evolved into a whole complex dedicated to tending for the horse's welfare including a farrier's workshop, a vet, a harness room, and a rest area for those who were poorly. As you might expect, feeding the 600 horses who lived at Paddington was a major task. At its height, the mint stables required, amongst other things, some 1,000 sacks of oats and 110 tonnes of hay per week. These provisions were stored at a large, purpose-built warehouse at Didcot and brought into Paddington by train. In the autumn of 1937, an excellent account of the mint stables, written by journalist Edward Braddon, was published in the Sphere magazine. Here indeed is the citadel of the London van horse, he begins. 
Perhaps instead of Citadel, I should have said Block of Flats, for the stables are immense buildings. The upper stories being approached by ramps of easy gradient, a little startling to a newcomer straight from the far, but there are ways of dealing with things. When I went over to the stables, they had just received drafts from Bath and Gloucester. Most of the horses had done a couple of years or so on a farm, and to the ways of London are naturally at first strange to them. However, each new horse is put with an old hand, and in a few days, the old hands teach the young uns many of the tricks of the trade. When, for instance, they are released from the stall by the stableman, the seasoned horse will lead the young horse down the ramp, at the carter's calling. When they return from a round and are unhitched, they walk to the water troughs, drink their fill and climb up to bed. Each horse knows its own stall and makes its own way to it. The same article notes that the GWR stables were essentially a 24 hour operation, with one of the main periods of activity being at 3am when the horses trotted off to the markets at Covent Garden, Smithfield and Billingsgate. I imagine that was quite a sight, especially under the atmospheric light of London's gas lamps. The multi-storey mint stables remained in use right up until 1955, with the last horse, who left there in the January of that year, being an 11 year old named Mary, who went off to enjoy much deserved retirement at an RSPCA country retreat, far from the hustle and bustle of London. Over the next few years, the stables were converted into the mint wing for St Mary's Hospital, initially for medical training, although they are now used by a number of departments, and they were unveiled in their present guise by the Queen Mother in July 1969. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this look at Paddington's old mint stables. Were you aware of this building, and can you think of any other horse related artefacts in London? If so, please be sure to let me know in the comments. Speaking of comments, I've received an incredible amount of kind ones recently, and I've truly enjoyed reading each and every one of them, thank you so much. I do my best to respond to all of them, so if I've missed you, please do forgive me. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome, I'm so pleased you found the channel and it's a pleasure to have you here. If you haven't yet subscribed to Rob's London, I'd appreciate it very much if you could please consider doing so, as this, along with clicking the bell icon, will ensure that you don't miss out whenever I publish a new video. Likes and shares are also very welcome, as they really do help the channel to grow. You may also be interested to know that I now have a Ko-fi account, where if you're feeling generous, you can donate a few pounds to the channel. As well as being greatly appreciated, any such tip would be most welcome, as it would go some way to helping me produce new content. I have an Etsy store too, Rob's Online Designs, where you'll find an array of mugs featuring hand-drawn illustrations of taxis, tube trains, buses and more. Links are all in the description. For now, thanks again friends, stay well and please be sure to stay tuned.